Does your game art look like this? I used AI to turn this concept art into game assets for my game. So the folks at Sonera reached out for me to try their AI tool that helps game developers make proprietary art for their games. And I'm sure you've all heard of tools like ChatGTP and Midjourney shaking up the world. For those of you confused why some people are excited, some scared, and some angry with these art generators, let's refer to an interview Forbes conducted with Midjourney founder David Holt. When asked how the dataset was built, Holt said they conducted a big scrape of the internet. We weren't picky, he said. They then asked whether they saw consent from the artist or from work still under copyright. No, there isn't really a way to get 100 million images and know where they're coming from. This has led to many discussions on the ethics of these AI generators. Lawmakers are also perplexed on how to solve such issues for this new and emerging technology. As of now, the copyright of images produced by Midjourney fall into a gray area, where you can't copyright the images it generates, but you're free to use them for personal and commercial use. So how is Scenario different? Well, when you want to generate art using Scenario, you can use one of their public generators, and those generators were trained with arts that the artists consent to. So what Whatever image you generate is your own proprietary work, which is important in game development. I mean, you don't want other people to snatch your game assets and use them in their own game. You can also use your own art to train your own generator. Now before I get any further, I'd like to mention that this video is sponsored by Scenario. <laughs> an AI tool for creating proprietary game assets. Thank you so much, guys. Now let's get back to the video. Before we dive into creating assets for the game, let's first discuss this game idea. For a while now, I wanted to create a game that puts you into the perspective of some animal or bug. After a bit of brainstorming, I came up with Buzzy Bee, a game that has you racing through three unique levels to collect pollen as fast as you can. Now that I had the concept down, it was time to generate some assets. Alrighty guys, are you ready? We're gonna go to the generators and go to the public generators. Scan for a style that you like. We're gonna go with the sticker maker and go to generate images. Alrighty, so since we're doing the platforms for the bees, I drew something very simple and we're gonna use that as our reference image. And then in the prompt, we're gonna write flower, daisy, maybe stem. And maybe sampling step 45, influence. Since this image is not that good, we don't want a high influence. We want it to go crazy. And we want this to be a tall image, so we'll do that. If you want it wider, it will go to the left. And since we want to follow the prompt heavily, let's increase the guidance and let's generate the images. Also, if you need some ideas on how to build a prompt, you can click this prompt builder and there's a lot of different words that you can put in to get certain styles that you want, even epochs. And as you can see, it has generated something pretty interesting considering we put a very simple image. Um, once you find one that you like, you could either just um, upscale it or you can refine. And sometimes what I like to do is I like to do a couple of iterations. Alrighty, so I lowered the influence to 16 and I got a really beautiful flower. So what I like to do is upscale the image and there you have it. And what I normally do is I put it in Photoshop and take out the background. But this is a really beautiful game asset that's ready to pop into your game. So I did the same process for more flowers, the grass, the bee in its wings, some hills, clouds, and the sun. And since we were working with parallax, there were some post-processing things I had to do to make sure that the ends looked good together. And here is what level one looked like. The flying is stamina based and running causes gravity to kick in and the timer calculates how long it takes you to finish the game, giving the incentive to move quick. As for level 2, it will take place in the desert with canyons in the background and cactus flowers. I also wanted to try out doing pixel art. So using pixel art in the prompt doesn't give the best results, but there's this tool called Pixelicious. So I normally uncheck use this palette and choose pixel grid size 128, but use whatever's best for your game. And we get some pretty awesome results. So you don't always need a reference image for generation. So I had no idea what to do for the desert tree. So I just typed it into the prompt and in just one iteration, I got something really nice. So I popped the game assets into Godot and here's what we got for level two. 
So for our last level, I wanted to stray away from realism. I also wanted to switch generators. For level 3, it will take place in a cave with stalactites, a lava pool, and some type of flower that could withstand being submerged in lava. I didn't want to expend any energy using my imagination, so I took the mid journey. So I popped in this prompt and was amazed at the beauty. Now I bet you're wondering what Niji is. It's a Japanese word that means rainbow, and all it does is give your image a more anime slash manga quality. I used the mid journey result as a reference image for scenario, and BAM! Now for the stalactites, I wanted to push scenario, so I made the crappiest reference image possible. And it took a couple of iterations, but I finally got something I could work with. I added some depth and different parallax speeds to the stalactites, and slapped on a rocky background and it was good to go. Finally for the main menu, I wanted some landscape art. So I tried out the bubbleverse generator with this prompt. Now if you notice, I added a couple of plus signs after the flower. This is a prompt expression that increases the weight. Learning how to manipulate prompts for AI generators are very important. There are also some guides for mid-journey prompts that are interesting to check out. Scenario has a prompt builder built in that really makes it easier to mess around with different styles. So after plugging in the main menu art, here is how the game turned out. It was pretty eye-opening using this technology in a game. I still love pixel art and creating my own assets, but I could totally see myself using this tool in the future for inspiration or if I'm stuck creating something. For game devs who don't like creating game assets, then this is definitely a game changer. And no, I don't believe these AI tools will wipe out human art. These tools depend on artists in order to train their generators. In order to create a generator, you input images with a singular style, and once it's trained, you can then produce unique images from the prompt. Scenario also has an artist network that encourages artists to submit their generators, and if your generator is selected to become a part of their public generators, you can receive a stipend. So if you'd like to try out Scenario, use my link and see for yourself how you can use it to speed up your workflow. Alrighty guys, have an amazing day, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!